Love the Lord your God with all of your heart. Love the Lord your God with all of your soul. Love the Lord your God with all of your strength and your mind. Love your neighbor. Love, love your neighbor. Love, love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love, love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. Luke chapter 10, 27. Luke chapter 10, 27. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart. Love the Lord your God with all of your soul. Love the Lord your God with all of your strength and your mind. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart. Love the Lord your God with all of your soul. Love the Lord your God with all of your strength and your mind. Love, love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, 27. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your strength and your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Jump, who can remember what our series is called? That's right, it's called Give, Help, Bring, and it's all about loving our neighbors. So, before we get started, I want you to close your eyes and picture this. You're on your way to your friend's birthday party. You're dressed nicely, you have the present all wrapped, you're going to arrive right on time. Then, on your way there, you see a boy crying on the footpath. When you take a closer look, you realize you know him. He is one of the kids from your rival basketball team. He's absolutely covered in mud and his bike looks pretty mangled. If you stop now, you will likely get muddy too and you will definitely be late for your party. What do you do? Do you stop even though he is on the rival team? Open your eyes. What did you decide to do? Put your hands up if you decided to help him. Awesome. If you said yes, why did you do it? It was probably because you had compassion for the person. You saw they were in need and even though it would make you late and dirty, you knew helping was the right thing to do. Last week, Jardina told us the story of the Good Samaritan. Now, as Jardina said, Samaritans and Jews weren't really buddies, so it was quite unusual that a Samaritan would go out of his way to help a Jew. But the Bible tells us that in Luke 10, 33, a Samaritan, as he traveled, came to where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. This means, just like most of you, the Samaritan saw the person in need and knew that the right thing to do was help. Why don't we check out the story of the Good Samaritan to refresh our memory before we go any further. The Miracle of Mercy, the Good Samaritan. This is Jesus, who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. You see, when Jesus was on earth, he wanted everyone to know what God thought about things. So he took every opportunity to teach people about God's heart. <clears throat> One day, a religious expert stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? <laughs> what does the law say? The man answered, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Do this and you will live. Wait. The man then asked, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. Ah! They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. <laughs> by chance, a priest came along. <laughs> Hey. But when he saw the man lying there, Ugh, yuck. he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. La 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 la, la 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 la, la 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 la, whoa! Another man who worked in the temple who was called a Levite walked over and looked at him lying there. Please help. Uh, huh? But he also passed by on the other side. 
Then a Samaritan came along. Ah. Samaritans were hated by Jews. They were seen as lesser people and Jews would not interact with them. But when the Samaritan saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his donkey and took him to an inn, where he took care of him. One room, please. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. All right, I love a good Saddleback Kids video. So who can tell me how did the Good Samaritan help? Well, firstly, he stopped. Everyone put your hand up and say stopped. Just like the scenario I shared with you at the beginning, one of the biggest barriers to helping our neighbours is busyness. We are in such a rush to get here or go there or do that thing. And sometimes we can forget to pause and see the people around us, like really see them. Loving our neighbour looks like firstly seeing them and not being too busy or feeling too important to see and help their needs. Secondly, the Good Samaritan met the needs of the injured man. Imagine if you had a huge cut on your leg, really needing some medical attention, and I walked over and I gave you a sticker. Would that actually be helping? While the sticker might make you feel a little bit better if that's what you're into, what you really needed in that moment was some proper first aid for your cut to be cleaned up and at least a band-aid put on top. Sometimes we have big ideas on how we're going to help others. But in the end, it actually ends up being more about us feeling good rather than helping the other person. See, real help isn't about us at all. It's all about loving God and loving our neighbour well. Finally, the Good Samaritan got uncomfortable. In Luke 10, 34, it says, He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. Now, who got to school or church this week on a donkey? Anyone? No, I didn't think so. But back then, that would have been his mode of transport, the way he got around. The thing about donkeys is they don't like have five seats like a car where the injured man could have laid comfortably in the back while the Good Samaritan drove. In fact, the Good Samaritan likely had to get off the donkey and walk and lead the donkey with the um, injured man on top of it. Now, the road wouldn't have been nice and paved like what we've got in Perth, but it probably would have been dusty, probably full of rocks, and the journey probably would have been quite long. And remember, the Good Samaritan was already on his way somewhere, wasn't he? So this was a real detour. When he helped, he actually made a choice to get uncomfortable. Sometimes loving our neighbour looks like getting uncomfortable. It looks like talking to the person who has no friends. It looks like helping mum clean up after our younger sibling has made a huge mess at dinner. It looks like pausing your game to help your sibling with something. It looks like asking the teacher if they need a hand rather than racing out the door at lunch. It looks like seeing a younger student injure themselves and sitting with them while someone else gets help. It pretty much always looks like putting someone else's needs ahead of ourselves. Now, you might be listening to me and think, Emily, I don't even know where to start. I mean, I love God and I want to love my neighbour too, but I don't think I could do what the Good Samaritan did. I mean, I don't even know first aid. The good news is that that is all okay. Today, I'm going to share three simple ways that you can begin to love your neighbour by helping, just like the Good Samaritan. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Okay, way number one, you can help with your words. 
I want everyone to say words. Proverbs 16, 24 says, Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. So you may not know the first thing about first aid, but the Bible tells us that our words can be healing. What you say matters. What you say can help. When you encourage someone, you are helping. When you give good, godly advice, you are helping. When you stand up for somebody who is being bullied, you are helping. You might think that saying, I love your outfit today, or you're really good at basketball, might not be much, but that can be enough to turn someone's whole day around. And remember, the parable of the Good Samaritan tells us that it's not just our friends and family that we're called to help, but everyone we encounter. So remember to share those kind words around. All right, are you ready for way number two? Drum roll, please. You can help with your action. What we do matters. The Good Samaritan took action. He didn't just say, oh man, that sucks. Hope you feel better. He took action. He did something to help. Where can you take action this week? Where can you use the hands and energy that God has given you to help someone and share his love with them? Maybe, like I said before, it's helping out mum and dad at home just because you love them. Maybe it's going out of your way to include somebody who might be lonely at school. Maybe it's even today in kids church by helping your leader gather everything you need for the connect group. You can help with your actions. So good. All right, I have just one more practical way you can help. And even though this one's number three, it's incredibly powerful. Way to help number three is by praying. There are some problems that might be a bit tricky for us to help with practically. We might not even know the words to say, but the Bible tells us to pray about everything. So that's what we can do. Prayer is powerful. It can change a situation in a moment. It can unlock miracles and it activates both our faith and the faith of the person you are praying for. Prayer doesn't need to be fancy or long. It's just simply asking God to move in somebody's life. Do you know, one time I had a friend who was in hospital. She was very unwell and very worried about that. Another friend and I went to visit her. So we helped practically. We brought her some gifts and we helped with our words by encouraging her and tell her how much we loved her. And now this friend, she didn't actually know God. But before we left the hospital, I just felt like I needed to pray. I'd done my practical helping, but I knew she needed God to move. So before we left, I just prayed a simple prayer with her, asking God to help her. And do you know what the most incredible thing was? Straight after we prayed, she said she felt so much better. She said that she felt peaceful and that she knew she needed God. Prayer is a powerful way to help others. So to recap, what are the three ways we can help? Does anyone remember? Why don't you repeat after me? Number one was words, say words. Number two was actions, say actions. And number three was prayer, say prayer. Jesus' heart is to love everyone. When we have Jesus inside of us and love others by helping, we actually don't show our own love, but God's love. And that is pretty amazing. Before we finish, I just want to pray for you that as you go into your week, you would not only see areas you can help, but you would feel so bold and so brave to help others that they would each experience the love of God through your help. Why don't you close your eyes and bow your heads as I pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for every child listening to this message and every adult too. God, I pray that as we go about our weeks, God, you would open our eyes to see the needs in our world, the ways in which we can help. And God, I pray when we see them, we don't feel overwhelmed, but we feel empowered by your Holy Spirit to help. And when we do, that people will experience your love in a very real way. We pray this all in your heavenly name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.